Right now, an Allegan County teacher is off the job while Michigan State Police investigate some very detailed comments that students say he made that were violent in nature in class. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano is live outside Hopkins High School. And Maria, parents say what that teacher said was inappropriate. One parent tells me the comments referenced physical violence, Andy and Erica, physical violence, but also weapons, one day after the deadly shooting at Oxford High School. He said that he'd, how he would have committed the act differently with detail is extremely scary. A parent at Hopkins High School says her child was in class on Wednesday listening to every word. That he would have pulled a smoke detector alarm so that he could create a distraction in order to carry out his hit list and kill the people that he would need to. It was gut-wrenching devastation that a grown adult would mentally harm our children this way. When asked to go into detail, Ken Shapansky, the principal at Hopkins High School, told me the school is investigating comments concerning some physical violence and some weapons made in class by a teacher in multiple class periods. He says a memo was sent to help teachers talk to their students about the Oxford shootings, but one teacher took it too far. They were insensitive in regards to being the day after Oxford. Um, and uh, they were off script. To make matters worse, the superintendent at Hopkins says the district awoke to rumors on Friday that an employee was going to shoot up the school. We would not have been in school today had we not felt that it was a safe environment for our students. This is a contained situation. In this letter, the superintendent says those rumors stemmed from an inappropriate classroom conversation. This parent says Hopkins should fire the teacher who led that conversation. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. Absolutely not should he be back in, in school teaching ever, anywhere. The teacher is on leave right now until the investigation is completed. Michigan State Police this morning was right here at the high school meeting with school officials and students. Angry and heartbroken dozens in Battle Creek call for justice and criminal charges against a security guard who police say shot and killed a man at a bar. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano is live outside the cricket club in Battle Creek. Maria, demonstrators marched downtown today just as we're learning that police are recommending criminal charges. Police are not telling us the exact charges that they're recommending. Trisha, that's because the Calhoun County prosecutor may decide on different ones. We've been here all day and I spoke to the family. They say they're still heartbroken by the situation and they're happy police are pushing for charges and they hope one thing happens and that is that one of the charges is first degree murder. Justice for Xavier. No justice, no peace. I'm feeling enraged and hurt. A large crowd voicing their frustration, calling for police and the Calhoun County prosecutor to do what demonstrators believe is right. The right charges. Open murder. We want justice. We want justice. We know the injustices that took place that night. More than 60 people looking for answers and marching straight to Battle Creek Police Headquarters to press for more. No peace! A community fighting for justice. Justice they say they need. No justice! No peace! For 29-year-old Xavier West. We deserve justice and peace. All these mothers were hurting. We don't want to slap on the back. It's refreshing to hear that they're bringing up charges, but what are those charges? We want murder. Yeah, first degree. Murder one! Murder one! An outcry seen and heard all over downtown Battle Creek. Community members visibly consoling each other. We got a big family, so we know how to stick together. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! The march ending outside the very place 29-year-old Xavier West was shot. 
Police say Adam Yanster was working security at the cricket club when a fight broke out on Thanksgiving morning. Police say Yanster shot West during the fight. Xavier was just a beautiful person. I mean, he would hug you so many times it would make you sick. You'd be like, boy. No justice! West was the father of an eight-year-old daughter. This memorial, as you can see outside the cricket club, continues to grow with flowers and candles honoring his life. Tonight, city officials will vote on a controversial decision to put pods in a Kalamazoo neighborhood. The pods would help people who are experiencing homelessness in Kalamazoo. It's creating a stir with residents who live near the potential site. News Channel 3's Jay Shitara joining us live from where that site would be to tell us why residents say they are being blindsided by this. Jay. Yeah, Kirk, the city of Kalamazoo purchased this property that I'm standing on at 322 East Stockbridge Avenue for $2 million through the Foundation for Excellence Fund. Now, neighbors do say they feel blindsided. Nonprofit organization Housing Resources, Inc. says the location is where they would put 50 pods to help people who are experiencing homelessness. Now, this is the only city-owned site that is being proposed right now. Other locations have not been determined or even announced yet. Now, tonight, that emergency ordinance will all go down in a vote by city commissioners. Neighbors say they aren't happy with how the city has handled the entire process. We are ignored over here in this neighborhood. When we call at meetings, half the time our voices are never given. We were blindsided by it. I, I didn't even see it coming. I mean, if I were to own that property, there's no way that I would put nobody over there. Now, city commissioners must vote on any site for temporary housing, although they have not named any other potential sites. Again, the emergency ordinance being voted on tonight will require organizations to get input from residents that will live near any temporary housing. It would also require organizations to provide any rules and regulations for people in the community. But the city commissioners will still have the final say if temporary housing can go on a property. Now, 50 pods with heating and beds would be put here, according to HRI, and the old health building on the lot would be used for private showers and bathrooms. The pods are expected to arrive later this month, according to HRI Director Michelle Davis. Now, the emergency housing ordin ordinance, excuse me, vote is again tonight at 7 o'clock. That will happen virtually on the city's Facebook page. We will have full coverage of that vote.